What's up? Do you have problems? Have you had a lot of problems recently? Are you sick of problems? Do you wonder sometimes, like, why are there always problems? Well, today, you're in luck. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. We're going to talk about why are there always problems. I'm Danny here, buddy. Randy, what's up, buddy? Here, Danny. So, have you had any problems recently? You know, it seems like they just won't leave me alone. <laughs> right? Phone like time. It's constant. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you get good at solving them and then more of them come. If it's not one thing, it's 12 others. And you know what's funny? It's like we make a lot of problems for ourselves. And there's like we solve sometimes and it feels good and whatever. But then like I feel like even when you feel like you're doing good, then an outside problem comes in too that you have no control over. And that like messes everything up. Like just when you think like whenever you think mm-hmm. things are like smooth, mm-hmm. the world's like, no. <laughs> Remember where you are and that you're alive. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I feel like there have been a couple times in my life where like all of everything lined up and all of my problems went away for like a day or two. And it was yeah, bliss. Sure. And and I was like, <laughs> I finally got it. This is awesome. All the big things that I was working on, they all worked out. This is great. And then boom. Uh, you know, something else. Yeah, like an idiot. You're like, did I hit Nirvana? Am I enlightened? Yeah. And it's right? like, no, no, you're not. Not even a little. <laughs> not at all yeah but it's a son of a gun because problems suck they do and you know the problem is is like well here's the issue though too are they bad because i mean i think it's funny we all hate problems but at the same time we get a lot of we also get a lot of value out of them like i think like i'm thinking like you know when you're working on a project and you run into a difficulty and then you figure out how to solve it that feels great right and you learn something And you overcome something or like even when something bad happens in the world, like that you have no control over, but you deal with it. Like you prove to yourself that you can handle these situations and overcome this. And like, you know, there's also that view that like, you know, the difficulties in life make like the pleasures in life even better because we have experience of both. Right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. What do you you think? Like, should we avoid problems? Should we seek them? Should we deal with them differently? Are we just life just hard? Question. Because there's, you know, like, I would say we're both inveterate problem seekers. Like, we've been, we've been self-educating forever, doing these challenging things. You know, it's always cold and, I don't know, rainy on the side of Everest or whatever that saying is. Cold and dark on the side of Everest. Cold and dark on the side of Everest. Yeah, and it's rainy, too. It is. It's not snowing. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's difficult because if I don't do that, I know for myself... But if I don't do that, I feel like I'm almost not contributing, not valuable, not worthwhile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I know you mean. Yeah. If I don't have stuff to do and problems to solve, I feel like I'm totally lost. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Dude, like some of I I still remember when I started working uh, at like 14, that provided such tremendous, like, uh, maybe not value, but just like affirmation in my life that I was contributing. And it was I was washing dishes at a country club. I mean, this was nothing like heroic yeah. where I was saving the world, but like I felt like I was really contributing and my efforts were like being noted like I was a good dishwasher. Like, oh my gosh, this is good. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, used to, I remember that when I first started working too, because it feels good. You feel like you're like, well, you feel like you're independent a little bit, you know, you're making money and you're actually doing something that you've seen adults do, which is nice, right? Like it feels like you're at that. At that point, yeah, so no, I understand that, mm-hmm. and I think you're right, though. We are both, we've both been like lifelong learners, so we've always been seeking problems out. I actually love, I love problems too, in a lot of ways. Like, I like solving problems, they also suck. It's mm-hmm. like this weird thing where, like, I really like them, but I also dislike them. And then there's problems that are like, you know, and I think there is a distinction between the problems we seek out because, like, we're learning, or like, you know, like, I'm sure somebody who, like, you know, is a really good athlete or musician, like there's those difficult things that like they actually like because when they solve it it's like that means they really like they leveled up they're like better they're you know they know how to do that thing now whatever and it feels really good but then there's those other problems that like we don't choose that i think are also really difficult because like you know when we have a lot of problems in our life that we choose all the ones we don't choose like add just an extra layer of stress to everything Mm -hmm. when you were just describing that it kind of made me think of problems like a roller coaster how like at the bottom, they really suck. Yeah. And then you're going up that thing and it's like a lot of effort and you hear it like click, 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 click. 
And then you get towards the top and you can like start to see over the edge and you're like, here we go. This is it. And it's starting to get good. And then you finally figure it out and the problem's going away. And the whole ride down is awesome. And then you get back down to the bottom and another problem's awaiting you. Yeah. And the whole ride's about 45 seconds. Yeah. Right. <laughs> after waiting for three hours. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about problems. Like I, re- I remember we talked probably like two or three years ago. We were talking about this story with the Buddha. I think it was like 89 problems or something like that. Some farmer, he came to the Buddha who heard he heard the yeah. Buddha was an enlightened being. And he said to the Buddha, he's like, you know, overall, my life's pretty good. You know, I have a great wife, but sometimes she nags me and my kids are wonderful, but sometimes they won't do what I say. And I have this great farm, but sometimes the yield isn't as nice as I would like it to be. And he's like, can you fix my problems? And the Buddha said no. And he's like, what? And he's like, but you're the Buddha. You're an enlightened being. You're supposed to be able to do this stuff. And the Buddha's like, listen, I can't solve that problem, but I can stop you from having one more, trying to think that you'll have a life without problems. Yeah. It's the truth, though, right? And I like Mm -hmm. that. That's a good example, too, because it's like, I think we we naturally look uh, we naturally look for ways to continuously improve our circumstances. I think that's part of the human condition, right? We create new things, we adapt very quickly, we build things, you know, we like, we constantly are looking for ways to improve something. And so we're constantly essentially looking for problems, identifying them, trying to make things better. And I think that's just like part of our life and part of what makes us feel like, you know, we're making an impact on the world, like you said, you know? And I think that is a big part of it, but they'll always be there. Like, because even things that are really good, there's going to be things about it we don't like. Like, you know, I mean, like, I remember when I first started uh, even teaching, like, I love teaching, but there's parts of the job I don't like. I'm sure everybody, even if you love your job, there's going to be aspects you don't like about it. There's mm-hmm. going to be things that, like, annoy you, like maybe bureaucratical work or this or that, whatever, you know? And it's like, so even things we love, there's going to be aspects that are difficult or hard to do. And so, you know, they're always going to be there. And, like, we can try to improve it, but then we make new problems trying to improve it. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a definition that I saw the other day of heaven and hell, and it said it said heaven. This is nice. I could stay here forever, and then hell was ah. There's one. There's this one thing that's not perfect, <laughs> and it's like that's so true because it's like as soon as you figure out that one thing that's just not right, it's like that's hell, and you yeah. can, and that's what problems are. Is like this one thing is not perfect, and silly us, we focus all of our energy and effort on those things that aren't perfect well that might be that way to look at it's like you know maybe it's about it's not we can't be rid of problems that's for sure there's no way to get rid of them as part of life but maybe it's our perspective on them that matters Mm -hmm. like how i look at them you know if we're always pursuing perfection we're going to have lots of problems and they're going to be insurmountable if we're like if on the other hand you know we're a little easier on ourselves more realistic Right. We might solve some and not solve others. And that might be OK, you know. And I think I've, I've been trying to do that more myself, like look at things like, you know, like the ones I can solve. It's a positive thing because I grow and it's good and I get, you know, I get to learn new things and stuff. But then there's going to be some that I just can't probably can't deal with or can't handle. And that's fine, too. You know, it's like but I think maybe it is our perspective, this desire to like make things perfect, to make the world fit a certain design, yeah. even though it doesn't. Yeah. How do you deal with problems that just suck? Yeah, it does suck, doesn't it? There's a lot of hard problems out there. There's some yeah. that are just so frustrating. And like I I I catch myself going down this thing because it's like I know this stuff that we're talking about. I know this stuff that it's just because I'm focusing on this stupid problem <laughs> that it looks so terrible. Like clearly there's a yeah. lot of other stuff in my life that's going great, but I'm focusing on this one little aspect. And I blow it out of proportion and I go down this whole rabbit hole. Right. And yeah. Yeah. So what does one do? I don't know. It is tough, dude. I think, you know, it's funny too, because I think like there's some problems that like maybe it is better just not to engage with them at all, you know? To just let it go, let it be. Walk by, so to say, right? Mm-hmm. Um and then there's others, you know, it's it is tough though, because we always find them, we always make them, and like, you know, some are just insurmountable. Like, you know, like we, you know, like we're going to die, right? Like that's a problem in mm-hmm. a sense, but it's also part of life. It's also the way the world is. So I think that's where the acceptance comes in. Like some things we just have to accept for what they are rather than looking at them as an issue to be fixed. Mm. Maybe that's it. Yeah. I don't know. Also, also trying to recognize the mind state that you're in. So like 
Yeah. We were talking earlier this week. I had a really bad back pain. And so I was feeling pretty terrible and in a pretty terrible yeah, mind state. <laughs> and so I was I was having this whole pity party for myself. And in my mind, I'm thinking, my life is terrible. Like 80% of the time is terrible. And maybe 20% it's okay. I feel crappy <laughs> all the time. I'm tired. Yeah. Anything, like yeah. now. Now I'm feeling better, and I'm like, okay, fine, 50 50. But like, <laughs> <laughs> fine, I'll give you 30%. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It is funny though, dude, because I do the same thing where like it's a, it almost it surprises me still how fast that transition is from my life's horrible, everything's going to suck, this is how it's always going to be to, oh, I feel fine. It's usually one night. That's usually <laughs> what it takes. <laughs> yeah. Like I needed sleep. But like, seriously, though, it's funny because like, you know, every time that happens, I'm always amazed because like, I go get in this and I'm like, oh, that's not the case. That was me just goofing around. <laughs> I was just <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's usually what it is. We're just a bunch of cranky babies. Either that or we're hungry. <laughs> yeah. Just eat something and go to sleep. And I think a lot of times, too, it's also like we demand. We're like we have unreasonable expectations about reality. Mm. Like, you know, that's the other problem, too, I think, is we want reality to be a certain way, but it just isn't. And it's like, you know, so that means I have to accept what isn't rather than fighting, but we choose fighting it a lot. And like you said, our imagination, once it starts running wild, man, that it's like our biggest enemy. It's like can be so it can be so helpful and great, but also so detrimental because like that screws us up all the time. when We start thinking about our lives, the future and like, you know. Dude, yeah. that's a huge one, our expectations. Cause I keep getting I keep getting trapped by this where I hold myself up to this unrealistic expectation of what I should be able to learn or know. Like I keep or getting be, frustrated. Yeah. I'm not some freaking genius already. And you know, as if as if it's just based on effort alone and not some type of crazy genetic freak accident, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the other problem, right? We all I think that's maybe that's you know, we talked about this before, but I do think that's like probably tied to education too like that you know we drill into kids that like you know you got to have age you have to be perfect you have to be the best like that you're validated only if you're at the very top and i, I wish think we would that's... start teaching that like these people that everyone looks up to are genetic freaks you know that yeah. that would be a little bit easier to understand well yeah because clearly not everyone's an einstein right like no. that was a a random occurrence that allowed for an individual like, like that to work in a was writing often. symphonies at like yeah. five years old. Well, that's the thing. Those people will always occur randomly and sporadically, but most of us, it's not the case. And we have to put a lot of work in, you know, and that's fine. But like if we had, I think that's the other thing. If we have more reasonable expectations about reality and what to expect from it. We'd probably be better at dealing with problems because we wouldn't see all of them as, you know, problems. It's, it's difficult to live an ordinary life. Like this, I get, I get bored. I notice this coming up on a regular basis where it's like, okay, waking up, doing the same thing again today, it's going very to hard. eat and going to work <laughs> and coming home and going to sleep and doing it once again. All right. It's challenging to just live an ordinary life. It is. It's very hard. I think it's hard even if you're living, you know, and that's the funny thing. Cause even if you were living the extraordinary life, whatever the hell that is, that would be hard too. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that would be any. And I think that's the funny thing. Like we also imagine in our heads that some other circumstance would be so much better. Yeah. And the reality is it probably wouldn't. But like, you know, we're just used to what we're used to. So I do like that in the the newest Elon Musk book by Walter Isaacson, where some reporter asked Musk, what would you say to the person who wants to be the next Elon Musk? And he said, be careful what you wish for. It's not as fun as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look fun, even from the outside. Yeah. It looks terrible. Yeah. Dude, he, I read, I read now because somebody was bitching about like you know like the environmental impact of like private planes. They were talking about that or whatever. But he took something like it was like almost two hundred flights last year or something. Like I mean, he has a private plane or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. so it's quicker. But like, just think about how much travel that is. Like I wouldn't even want to do that. I wouldn't want to get on a plane two hundred, even if it was my own goddamn plane and. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, I didn't have to deal with the, you know, uh, the security and all that. It's still, I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what people don't think of. We look at, we look at these other people and we look at one aspect. Like, oh, I want his money. I could do. And it's like, but it comes with all this other crap. Sleeping at Twitter because you bought it and it's a mess, you know, like working seven days a week. Like that comes with mm -hmm. that personality. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
there's this really interesting book that's on Oprah's uh, book list called Bewilderment. And I'm reading it right now. Who's that and, by? That sounds familiar. Oh, I couldn't tell you. But okay. Uh, so it's on her book list. It's called Bewilderment. And I'll but it's really it interesting because it's about this autistic kid who does this neuro neuro neurofeedback type thing. And he ends up becoming somewhat enlightened to where he recognizes that like everything is one. And it's really interesting reading that book because now as I go around throughout the day, instead of seeing everything as the other, which I do 100% of the time, now I do it 99.9% of the time. And then 0.01% nice. of the time, I see You're other, yeah, I see other as me. So like when I see the couple who's being all romantic and I'm single and lonely, I can still be like, oh, there's love in the world. Like, as opposed to just being yeah, yeah. some jealous uh, whatever. So it's, yeah. it's kind of interesting because it changes perspective on all that Perspective stuff. does matter. It is weird that all things are connected when you think about it. You know, we do think of things as being very distinct and separate, but they're not. Mm -hmm. You know, I always think about that. Just think of the air you breathe, you know? It's just it's Ew, touching gross. everything else. I know, gross, <laughs> right? The trees, the bugs, some chipmunk probably farts. breathed it. <laughs> yeah everything everything it is funny but yeah i mean you know it is all connected and i think perspective that's a good point like perspective matters like if you can switch your perspective you can look at these things a lot differently and maybe in a better way mm -hmm. it's hard though it is hard because yeah. you know the other thing is when you're in a problem all that goes away you know like especially when it's a really big problem like you just all you lose all all the resources you had to deal with things <laughs> gone like just gone. I'm so I'm so blown away listening to our old podcast, especially <laughs> when it's relevant to what I'm going through. Because I listen to it, and all of that reasoning, all of that logic, is just gone. completely gone in the moment. And then I'm listening. I'm like, how did I know this? <laughs> yeah, dude, I get that feeling all the time. And like, it's like, so I did know what to do. I just didn't do it, or I just didn't have access to it. And our mm -hmm. brains are very weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's, we're very good at like. We're very good at like blocking things out when we have when we're stressed in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we're unable to like. I think that's part of me just taking a step back too when we face these problems and giving ourselves a chance to like, instead of immediately trying to tackle it, like giving ourselves a chance to like think it through. Because I do that with like you know I do that with work a lot. Where like I'm learning something, I get stuck, and instead of just banging my head against the wall, I leave it alone for an hour or two or a day, and then usually it solves itself. Like mm -hmm. your brain works it out. And if we did that more with other stuff, we'd probably be a lot better off. Probably. Yeah. Not that we're going to, but like if we did. <laughs> yeah, just take a vacation from your problems. Yeah. It's to leave it for tomorrow, as mm -hmm. they say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, because we can't, we can't, we're, listen, we're going to die with problems. Yeah. And there's going to, the world's still going to continue to turn. Like, that's the thing that gets me all the time is I think if I solve all my problems, by the time I die, then I succeed. But it's not true because there's still just going to be the world turning and You're problems dead. and all You'll this stuff going dead. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is funny. We also convince ourselves that, right? That somehow we'll, if we fix all these things, somehow we'll be at a point where there won't be anything like I problems win. or anything. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, you win. But it's like, no, there's still going to be all that crap. You're not going to get away from that. It's still going to exist. And even when you do solve everything, there's still problems. Even mm -hmm. if it's only the problem of what do I do now? Yeah. you know like yeah. yeah yeah it is funny so trying to slow down and be okay with just problems and having them and yeah i guess yeah, it sucks right what a terrible response <laughs> i guess that's a, that's one thing that i've been working on because like i always felt like being very efficient at dealing with problems was good but then that just gives you more problems to deal with yeah if you slow down you have less of them yeah <laughs> And of course, to find out new, <laughs> and then you don't have to be stressed about being get, being all rushed. Yeah, I've been trying to just be easier on myself, take a step back, look at things like you know, give myself space and distance from mm -hmm. things before I try to address them. That's been very helpful, and mm -hmm. also just accepting the fact that like no matter what I do, there's going to be problems. No matter what I do, things are going to happen that I can't. You know, like even if even if everything goes perfect, there could be a storm where there's flooding and then your basement floods. You know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. you had no control over. Right. And that's just life. Yeah. Bingo. There you have it. That's why there's still <laughs> problems. That's why there's still problems. That's why there'll always be problems. And, you know, hopefully that helps you figure out what to do with them. Maybe. I don't know. 
But hey, if you like this episode, this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. Check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. We'll be back later this week with a quick fix. Until then, though, later. Later, Danny.